That was so beautiful, wasn't it? Wasn't that beautiful? The harp has become a staple in our congregation. No, this is very, very nice. Thank you. Uh, a couple of prayer concerns this morning, would ask, or this evening, would ask your prayers to please be with uh, Carrie Robbins. Carrie did, in fact, donate a kidney. And I can't remember, where was that kidney on the way to? Minnesota, somewhere? And then... Uh, so it started the uh, procedures with that. But please keep carrying your prayers. Everything went well. I would also pre appreciate your prayers uh, for my daughter, Emily Jordan. She had an emergency appendectomy this morning, about 3 o'clock in the morning. So uh, I'm a little bit punchy. Um, I didn't, uh, didn't get any sleep last night, so uh, but we'll, we'll make her through here okay. But she's doing well. As a matter of fact, she's home already. I can't believe they sent her home. So but she's doing well. We are going to have a hand mime by the catechism kids at the end of the service. Uh, hopefully it'll be dark enough. I think it's, it's getting there, so it should be pretty nice. We're going to do that right after the last hymn, so bear with us after the last hymn and stick around for the hand mime. It is good to see you one and all. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Gather us, O God, around the cross of Christ. May the fruits of this tree feed the hungry.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your mercy, strengthen us and keep us. Support us when we call to you. Be with us and keep us in your gracious love. Amen. Our scripture for this evening is taken from the book of Galatians. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. The word of our Lord. Let us read together Psalm number one. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, 
with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they divided my garments amongst themselves and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now. If he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. One of the criminals who hung there in, hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what, we de what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama shavakthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Later, knowing that all was now completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his life. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and of Joses and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, 
and he testifies so that you also may have faith. These things happen so the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken, and as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea and was waiting for the kingdom of God. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph took the body. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, Joseph's own new tomb that he had cut out of a rock in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there and rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was alive, that imposter said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he had been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go, make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Usually when I say it is finished, it is because either I cannot do anymore or do not want to do anymore. I get kind of get tired. I get fed up. I am saying, really, I am finished. I'm done. That's it. No more. Jesus means something else when he says these final words from the cross. It is finished. Into your hands I commend my spirit. I love working crossword puzzles, and actually I do pretty darn well on them, um, except for certain sections. Sometimes they have these clues, you know, that says something like, what's the French word for headache? I mean, who would know that? Or who is the coach of the, uh, the quarterback for the San Francisco, whatever they are, what are they are? <laughs> 49ers, thank you. I was gonna say Giants, what are they, is that a baseball team? Oh, well never mind, okay. See and that's why I don't get those sections. So sometimes there are those sections in crossword puzzles that I don't get done, but it's finished for me. Okay, let me explain this to you one more time. Now pay attention, okay? You see, you still don't get it, do you? Okay, I'm finished. That's it. Not trying to explain any more to you. Kids will say they are finished with homework, with meals, with chores, when sometimes they are not actually finished with them. 
I'm sure not your kids, I'm sure not of these kids who are here this evening, but kids will sometimes do that. And of course they learn that from guess who? All of us. There's a wonderful story about Johann Sebastian Bach. It was just his birthday. It was either yesterday or the day before. Um, a wonderful story about Bach, though, and he gave his kids lessons. They all learned to play the piano and organ and other instruments as well. And he would make them practice for hour after hour after hour. And Bach would compose these pieces for piano where they had to take their little hands and they had to stretch them so far in order to hit the keys. He did that intentionally, just trying to get them limbered up. The kids got back at him. No, I love this part of the story. The kids would play their pieces. They would play the practice pieces, everything except for the last note. And then they would get up and they'd walk away. Bach drove him crazy. And he'd come running from wherever he was, whatever room he was in or outside or whatever, and he'd go over to the piano, whatever instrument, and just play that last note. Because it wasn't finished. All of you cooks know the frustration of cooking a meal and everybody has eaten everything except for that one last piece. That one last spoonful. And you try to give it to someone, oh no, I'm finished, I'm finished. Everyone is finished. And that one last piece remains. And then there's those times when we think we are finished, but in fact we are not. Like movies, you know, where there's some kind of bad guy who's chasing people, and the people find a clobber him over the head or something, and they think, okay, he's a goner, and he's laying there, and then the camera kind of pans out, and here are the heroes of the movie, you know, they're kind of embracing, and they're all happy, and off in the distance, you see this guy's body, and all of a sudden, it starts to move, you know. Always works that way, doesn't it? Then he comes after him one more time, because he's not finished. Or you clean for your guest and your house is all ready and they come inside your house and you welcome them and give them a hug or whatever and all of a sudden you look up and just above your one guest head is this cobweb. <laughs> Almost touching her head. Cleaning not quite finished. Jesus did not say he was finished. He said it is finished. It is finished. For us, it's the exact opposite. We don't say maybe so much it is finished as much as we say we are finished. That's it. No more. Not going to give you the time of the day anymore. I'm not going to try anymore. I'm not going to work in his name anymore. I'm finished. I'm done. So, so much goes unfinished. And then there's this earthly life that tells us you are finished. You're done. Your time is up. And we lose those people that we love. The life passes so quickly. Our own life seems to go so quickly. And we're not ready to call it quits. We're not finished, we say. We're never truly ready to to let go of someone, not really ready to let go of ourselves with this earthly life. Life at times seems to scream at us in all these different ways, I said you're finished, you're done, get over it, get out of here. And yet we're not finished because Jesus made sure that death itself was finished. Death is finished. Life is accomplished. That love that is so powerful, it even grows after death. We had a member of our, uh, one of our former parishes by the name of Willard. Willard, uh, I mentioned Willard before one time. He's this guy who used to be really irritating at church council meetings, and he always would, uh, just to reiterate, he'd always would say these kind of things that used to drive everyone crazy, you know, and suggest things that drove everyone crazy, and always vote against everything, and everyone's eyes would roll whenever Willard talked, but whenever anything was done, 
Even though Willard voted against it, he was the first one there that was Willard. Another really cool thing about Willard, Willard rang the church bell year after year after year after year. We were at the funeral home and I was standing there and a family was walking by and uh, it was a mother with her little boy, a small little guy. And they're standing in line ready to greet the family over by the casket. And he looks up at his mom um, and he says one of the most powerful sentences I ever heard come from a kid's mouth at a funeral home. He looked up at his mom and he said, Willard was a good bell rainer. He was a good bell rainer. Didn't break any world's records, Willard didn't. Was he on the cover of People's Magazine? I've never seen him there. Not mentioned in March Madness basketball, of course, what would I know about that? Right? But my goodness, that man made an impression on that little boy. He made an impression on me. And he wasn't finished. Not by any means. I told him at Charlotte's uh, funeral, one of the things I liked so much about Charlotte, I said, kind of compared her with uh, my wife's mother. She was actually, uh, she actually reminded me so much of my wife's mom. They even looked the same, except, uh, you know, Charlotte was about up here, and Carol's mom was about, you know, like that. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, I started out my grandma's, uh, or my wife's uh, mom's uh, funeral service, and I said, who does this remind you of? <laughs> That's how she drove the car, you know. Um, but they were both known for being very adventurous people. You know, they uh, were doing different things like kayaking and whatever it was. They would go around doing these things. And I told them at Charlotte's funeral, same thing. I said to my mother-in-law's, that wasn't their best quality. I don't think either one of them's best quality. The best quality was that when you were with them, you thought you were the only person on the face of the earth. It was all about you, that you weren't finished. What we should be finished with is our egos. <laughs> that should be finished. What should be finished with is our pride. That should be done. Enough of that. We should be finished with trying to get things to be our way, our way or the highway. We should be finished with trying to say, hey, we're just doing our duty, right? And as I always say, what we are called to be in this world are Vanna Whites. That's what we're called to be. They may not seem like the coolest thing in the world to be a Vanna White, but doggone it, she's a star of Wheel of Fortune, isn't she? Much more so than old Pat. And actually, those little lights could light up on those puzzles without Vanna doing it. Everybody know that, you know? <laughs> but Vanna goes over there and she points, touches them, and magically enough, the clues come. That's what we're called to do. We are called to be the Vanna Whites of the world. We are called to be the Willards of the world. Just good bell ringers. Just good pointers. Announcing to the world and reminding ourselves, look to the cross. It's finished. But Jesus never will be. And in his name, our acts and our love are just beginning. Amen.
us make confession of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, source of all life and salvation, Lord Jesus, light in this dark world, illuminate our hearts and minds. Be the center of all we are, and light 
Holy Spirit, water of life, flow through our hearts and into our lives. Heavenly Father, make our lives fruitful as branches and, branches and shoots of the one true tree of life. Jesus Christ, servant king, may we understand the meaning of service. We pray for the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power of the Spirit. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A reminder about our hand mime, and you may want to position yourself, reposition yourself, come forward, or kind of get to a spot where you can see it better. Feel free to do that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.